Welcome to the Cadaver Lab. Today you are a first year medical student. You already earned a bachelor's degree. Congratulations. Now you're working on your next four years of medical school. And as part of the curriculum, you will be dissecting a cadaver, which is a preserved human body, over the course of the semester. Today you're going to be entering the cadaver lab for the first time. We start with a moment of silence to honor those who donated their bodies so that we could learn. Let's start by reviewing some background information about spinal cords. First, we need to recall the anatomy of the vertebral column because the spinal cord is named in the same way. So our head would be up here and our top vertebra are our cervical, the top seven, and then thoracic, this is where our ribs attach to, the next 12. And then our low back is the lumbar. And then at the bottom there, we have the sacrum and the coccyx. And you can remember 7, 12, and 5 because of breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The cylindrical spinal cord, a continuation of the brain, is an association and communication center. It plays a major role in spinal reflex activity and provides neural pathways to and from the brain. Enclosed within the vertebral column, the spinal cord extends from the foramen magna of the skull to the first or second lumbar vertebra. The, a foramen means it's a hole, so it's basically the hole in the back of our head where our spinal cord attaches to our brain. And then if we look down here, the first or second, so this is the cervical section, the first seven, this is the thoracic, the next 12, so then this right here is the first lumbar vertebra, and this right here is the second lumbar vertebra. So our spinal cord actually ends right here, and what we have coming off of this is like a bunch of individual nerves. So if you notice, like this is kind of like a larger rope, and then these are like little teeny strings coming off of it. Like the brain, the spinal cord is cushioned and protected by meninges. The dura mater and arachnoid meningeal coverings extend beyond L2, approximately to the level of S2, so all the way down into the sacrum. And a fibrous extension of the pia mater extends even farther to attach to the posterior coccyx. So we are looking at a cross section of a vertebra. There is the spinal cord in the middle. And just like the brain, that layer like immediately touching it is the pia mater. It kind of looks blue. And then this white layer is the arachnoid mater. See the little threads coming off of it? That's where the cerebral spinal fluid would be. And then we have this outer, um, thicker layer right here that is the dura mater. And anything yellow is always going to be a nerve, by the way. In humans, 31 pairs of spinal nerves arise from the spinal cord and serve the body area at their approximate level of emergence. The cord is about the diameter of a thumb for most of its length, but is obviously enlarged in the cervical and lumbar areas where the nerves serving the upper and lower limbs leave the cord. So, oops, okay, I won't move my picture because then that thing comes up. But as soon as that goes away, we'll be able to see a view of the spinal cord. And notice we can see the top of the brain stem there with the medulla oblongata. And then everything in yellow is the spinal cord. Um, the top, the cervical enlargement, that is where your arms basically attach to your spinal cord. So if you think about any nerve that's going to innervate your fingers or your arms, it has to come out of that cervical area right by the neck. That's why it's so much bigger. The thoracic area just has the ribs, no lungs or no limbs, so no enlargement there. And then the lumbar enlargement is bigger where the legs have to attach. Because the spinal cord does not extend to the end of the vertebral column, spinal nerves emerging from the inferior end of the cord travel through the vertebral canal for some distance before exiting. This collection of spinal nerves at the inferior end of the vertebral canal is called the cauda equina, which translates to horse's tail. So that is what I was actually talking about earlier, about how the spinal cord only goes to like about the first lumbar vertebra, and then the rest of it are just like descending nerves. So this is supposed to look like a horse's tail, which like, yeah, I kind of get, get what they're saying there. 
Now we will begin the spinal cord dissection. The spinal cord has been dissected so that you can view each region. So orient ourselves. Here's our picture from before where there's our cervical area with its enlargement, our thoracic region, our lumbar region with its enlargement, and then the horse's tail, cauda equina down here. And then here's the part where we're gonna dissect. Like if you can imagine we cut out just this part, we're gonna zoom in here, zoom into the thoracic, zoom into the lumbar. So here we go. This is a section of the cervical spinal cord. And I would just really encourage you to look at it and think about what you notice. This is a section of the thoracic spinal cord. So compare it to the cervical. What do you notice? What do you wonder? And here we have the end of the lumbar section of the spinal cord, but what we're really seeing there is the cauda equina. And that view looks, it makes it look a lot more like a horse's tail. And again, we're comparing this to the cervical and thoracic sections of the spinal cord. Next, we'll take a look at the internal anatomy of the spinal cord. Gray matter. In cross-section, the gray matter of the spinal cord looks like a butterfly or the letter H. The two posterior projections are called the dorsal horns. The two broader anterior projections are the ventral horns. In the thoracic and lumbar regions of the cord, there is also a lateral outpocketing of gray matter on each side, referred to as the lateral horn. The central area of gray matter surrounds the central canal of the cord, which contains cerebrospinal fluid. Don't worry, I'm gonna show you an image of this in a second. But basically, we have posterior, anterior, and lateral horns named for if they face the front, the sideways, or the back. The dorsal horns contain association neurons and sensory fibers that enter the cord via the dorsal root. The cell bodies of these sensory neurons are found in an enlarged area of the dorsal root called the dorsal root ganglion. The ventral horns contain cell bodies of motor neurons of the somatic nervous system, which send their axons out via the ventral root of the cord to enter the adjacent spinal nerve. The dorsal and ventral roots fuse to form the spinal nerves. The lateral horns, where present, contain nerve cell bodies of motor neurons of the autonomic nervous system, specifically the sympathetic division. Now we're going to talk about white matter and then we'll see the diagram. The white matter of the spinal cord is composed of myelinated fibers, most running to or from higher centers. Because of the irregular shape of the gray matter, the white matter on each side of the cord is divided into three regions, the posterior, lateral, and anterior columns. Each white column contains a number of fiber tracts composed of axons with the same origin, destination, and function. Tracts conducting sensory impulses to the brain are ascending or sensory tracts. Those carrying impulses from the brain to the skeletal muscles are descending or motor tracts. So just like the sensory division and the motor division for to and from the brain. Okay, here we go. Let's try to make sense of this. Um, first, I'll just want to point this out. This is a nice view of the meninges. So this layer right there hugging the spinal cord is our pia mater. This one that kind of looks like cobwebs is the arachnoid mater. And then the thickest, toughest one is the dura mater. And then let's come back in here. The hole in the middle is called the central canal. There is um, cerebral spinal fluid in there. And then this is the gray matter that's supposed to look like the H or like the butterfly. And then let's see, which way are we facing here? So where is my gray matter? There we go. Okay, the dorsal horn. Okay, so this one we have dorsal. This one we have ventral. So like this would be the belly and this would be the back, and then this would be coming out the side. The gray matter is where the cell bodies are, and the white matter is where the axons are. Um, what else? Oh yeah, dorsal root ganglion will be important because we'll be able to see that later on. 
it's the name for like a collection of nerves. So a whole bunch of spinal nerves are leaving right here. And then where they all kind of get roped up together is called the ganglion. Kind of like if you took a bunch of small fibers and taped them together. Finally, we'll take a look at a cow spinal cord. Obtain a dissecting tray, a razor blade, petri dish, and disposable gloves. Place a segment of preserved spinal cord on the dissecting tray and bring it to your laboratory bench. So that is how I order the spinal cords. They come in a pail like that. And then you have to take off the lid and it just looks like terrifying. And then you have to stick your hand down into that fluid. And finally, we find some spinal cords. Cow spinal cords. So there is one on our dissecting tray. Identify the tough outer dura mater and the web-like arachnoid mater. So the dura is pretty easy to see. It's coming off the spinal cord. And I didn't pull it off. That just like happened in shipping. So like this layer, it's compared to like a leather. That's the dura mater. And then we can just see the top of the arachnoid right here. And then like here, like it's still in the spinal cord, but here it's peeling off. And then the pia mater is right here. You can't really see it, but we're just imagining it like cling film that's holding the spinal cord together. And if you tried to peel some of it off, you might have some success with doing that, depending on what your hands are like. Peel back the dura mater and observe the fibers making up the dorsal and ventral roots. If possible, identify a dorsal root ganglion. So here we have, like, we made a cut down the middle to be able to, like, slice the dura mater. And then they pinned it back. So this is dura mater right here. And all of those little thread-like things are roots. This is not a great picture of them. There's some dorsal roots right there. There's some dorsal roots. Here is a better picture. So this is one from class. This is a spinal cord. Yes, I know that it looks like string cheese, but it is a spinal cord. And then um, this would be a dorsal root ganglion right there, the collection of them. And hmm, here's a picture that I found online that is um, even better. So this is their dura mater peeled back right here. And then if you can see, here's our collection of nerves leaving the spinal cord. So that would be a dorsal root ganglion. And now we've removed the spinal cord and this is just the dura mater, but you can see some of the ganglions and you can see the holes where all the spinal cords go through them. And by the way, if you pick this up and try to pull it, like you would not be able to pull it. That's how strong it is. Using the razor blade, cut a thin cross section of the cord and identify the ventral and dorsal horns of the gray matter. Put the cross section on a petri dish and observe it with the aid of a dissecting microscope. So here's our cross section. Um, this is not their microscope because I think you could see it better with just my phone. But if we zoom in here, we can see our little butterfly. There is our gray matter. That hole in the center right there is the central canal. There's fluid in there. And then all of this stuff out here is the white matter. And I am i don't remember the orientation of this, so I'm not sure which side is the dorsal and which side is the central side. But when I look at this, I picture all of the cell bodies right there. And then this part is all of the axons. Compare your cross-section with figure 15.3. So let's see if we can see everything. The ventral, the dorsal. Yeah, I can't really see enough difference of ours to be able to tell them apart. <laughs> Observe the shape of the central canal. What fills this canal in the living animal? And that's it. Thanks for listening.